Alrighty, tomorrow is announcement day. We will finally know what this project is and everything Wonderland has in store for us for the 2025 season. With that being said, I'm gonna start off this video. This is the final round of my season pass giveaway. We are giving away a gold pass fully loaded with all season fast lane, all season dining and all season drink. Now, if Wonderland holds true to what they do every year, that pass will work for the remainder of this year and all of next year as well. So you'll technically be getting like one and a quarter seasons out of that all season fast lane. So comment down below, like this video, and make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Um, I'm gonna select 25 commenters and people who've liked and subscribed to the channel using a bot, um, and they'll move on to the next round, the final round. Anyways, with that being said, let's get on to the video. So a lot is unknown about this project. Wonderland has kept this tight-lipped, a complete secret, and it's been one of the best-kept secrets in the coaster community to date, at least to my knowledge. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but it's been really well kept down to controlling uh what content and information gets out there wonderland has kept this a uh, really good secret kudos to them um i'm really excited for tomorrow i know this means a lot to the park um and they are super excited to make this announcement as well with that being said what do I know? What can I talk about using the information that is inside the park? Let's talk about the footing map. The footing map is super important to figuring out this coaster as it reveals a lot of information, i.e. the direction of the coaster, um, intense moments on the coaster. Is there going to be a tower section on the coaster? So let's talk about what we see before us. So in the yellow highlighted area, I have Elpin Festival. That is going to be a new themed area or enhanced themed area. The orange is the break, run, and station. The purple is a holding break slash storytelling section of the ride. The green is a little booster launch. The black will take you on into the mountain. And the two little green lines are uh, the direction of the first launch that the coaster will take. Will it go to the left side, highest peak? Um, or will it go in between Vortex's lift and drop? Those are the two exit points of the ride. Now, if it happens to be a dueling coaster, let's talk about that. Could it be a dueling coaster? Well, my personal opinion is no, and I'm going to stick to that. I've been saying that since the beginning. I'm not going to abandon ship yet. I get it. Wonderland's teasing campaign has most certainly been hinting at a dueling aspect with the way they've been wording things, but I want to dispel some of that speculation. So there's been a theory that maybe it'll start in Extreme Sky Flyers Plot of Land and the two coasters will meet in the middle. That to me is highly impossible. So with the footing map that I have before you with the footing markings, you can tell that there's no lower numbers in the Extreme Sky Flyer Plot of Land. Um, doesn't look like the coaster is going to head out from that way and meet in the middle at the mountain. It would also be next to impossible for a dueling aspect for two coaster stations located on opposite ends of a, a large area to time that uh, for a dueling aspect. I also want to point out that uh, full throttle cost about six million U.S. dollars back in 2013. Um, with inflation costs and all that, we're looking at about. Um, with the, the length of this coaster, by the way, compared to Full Throttle, about double the length. Uh, we're looking at about $14 million um, American minimum for this coaster, not including construction costs of working inside the mountain and all that. Um, so that's just the coaster alone. So if you're going to make it dual, um, and by the way, if it is dueling, which there is one small aspect of the footing map that kind of could hint to that as well, although I think that's just an element. Um, is the 157 A, B, and C times two. That means two coasters would be that long. So you're looking at like a $32, $34 million coaster project, not including the construction costs inside the mountain, um, the removing Extreme Sky Flyer, and then the cost of building Elpin Festival. So it, it would be a too large of a project in my opinion, but who knows? I have heard that this is Wonderland's core project. Um, they're expecting it to be a bigger draw than Yukon Striker. So it does sound like this has a big, big, big project written all over it. So 
maybe I'm wrong, and maybe this is going to be dueling. But again, I personally do not think so. The footing map does not suggest it to my knowledge and opinion. Um, other people have commented on the same thing. It just doesn't align. So, as you can tell, the coaster will launch out of the mountain. Whether it's going to do some spaghetti bowl elements inside the mountain is unknown. I will say, with the footings you see before you, if you look inside that blue section, that blue section is the borderline of the coaster. So that is with those red and white checkered dots. It kind of highlights the border of the path. Um, you can tell that we go from like the fi mark marking 15, which is just entering tunnel three over under thunder run to suddenly 111 114 and all that in extreme sky flyers pot of land so it's got to do a lot of elements between exiting the mountain and extreme sky flyer um for those footing um number changes because if you even look at extreme sky flyer to the pizza pizza patio you go from 111 to 133 134 136 so this coaster has an interesting footing layout let me tell you that that's a whole other topic of discussion when it comes to other premier coasters the footings are very close together especially on launches um but this coaster has been doing a system of one two one two in terms of footings and they've been pretty healthily spread out similar to how bnm does their footings. so there have been small signs, and take this with a grain of salt because there is no information to back this up aside from what I'm presenting right now. There are some small signs that this could potentially be a new track design or a new train design and that there is going to be some sort of new type of project. Now, do I fully think that? No, but we have. it has been very hard to understand this project based off of its footings. It does not align with other premier coasters, especially that booster launch. Um, from what I know, and I'm gonna stop the conversation on the coaster in about two seconds and talk about the other announcement that's gonna be going on, um, is it's gonna turn out of the station and enter a hold. There'll be a hold, and with that knowledge of knowing that it's gonna be a hold, I'm assuming there's gonna be some sort of storytelling piece before it enters, in quotations, a booster launch and then enters the mount into the main launch. So that's what I know about this coaster full heartedly. Um, so with that information, um, I do think that this is going to be a heavily storytelling based ride. But also based off of the footing map, it's going to be a really long ride. And I think that there's a reason they went with Premiere as the final product, as they're a little cheaper on the budget. And if you're going to build a heavily story-based ride and a long ride um, with two main launches, you're going to want to cut the cost somewhere. So if you built Mock, Vacoma, or B&M, it would have cost a pretty penny to do what you wanted to do um, on before you. So let's move on to Elpin Festival. Elpin Festival is a themed area that will most likely be coming to Canada's Wonderland for the 2025 season. It's been in the teasers. You've heard me referencing Elpin for like over a year now. And people were getting so triggered with me calling it Elpin. They were like, it's International Festival. It's not Elpin. Um, but yes, they have moved forward with Elpin. It's going to probably have a Bavarian theme. Um, it's going to have that kind of like Festival Oktoberfest theme, in my opinion. And I actually think that this is perfect as the park holds that annual Oktoberfest and they could do a lot in this area. So starting with the Tim Hortons patio and Krakenwagen, Krakenwagen, however you want to say it, um, I think those two areas are going to be bulldozed and revamped to be seating areas slash festival and food and drinking areas. I think that they're obviously going to serve beer, pretzels and other staples in this area and of course they're going to add more seating and i think it's just time for the go-karts to go and enhance that structure that the go-karts sit under to build a nice venue that they could host oktoberfest and a nice seating area for people to you know grab a drink sit down and eat i think it would be a really missed opportunity to not take that um, i also think thunder run could potentially see some sort of enhancements whether that means it's going to get its old bavarian station 
um, uh, or it's just going to receive minor enhancements. I think that's part of the plan as well. I also think the fly is going to get rethemed. The wolf, Wolperdinger, um, however you want to pronounce that, um, is a mystical animal in Bavarian history. Um, so I just put that there as a potential name. That's not anything I know. Um, and then obviously your station for what I'm calling Drakenfell. That's not going to be the name, but that's just what I came up with. And then obviously inserting your Bavarian town in the area as well and enhancing the Alpen Festival theme. Now, I really hope they don't just go with the circus tents that they presented on that poster and they do stick to the Bavarian theme. I would love to see something similar um, to Busch Gardens Williamsburg. I know they have a very similar-ish design and I'd love to see that here at Canada's Wonderland. So I'm really hoping they go with that for this area, but I just wanted to present it um, in the form of what my mind thought this area could look like and give you a very cheap looking visual as to what I think tomorrow could be. Tomorrow, do I think um, it is going to be a full announcement? Yes. So you guys, I asked a question sticker on, what do you call it? Instagram. And I have a habit of not always answering the question stickers. So I'm going to make sure I answer these now at the end of the video. So let's answer some of these questions. So one question I got was, will the merge fast lane plus or give a dedicated line? Um, I think that in true Cedar Point fashion, Cedar Fair fashion, there is obviously a chance of a merge. Um, but there is also a chance of a dedicated line. Again, that is a question I can't really answer. That is just speculation. Do you know what it is or more of an idea of it based on being close with Wonderland? Obviously, I do not know what this is, nor would I say what it is. One, again, this project is very important to Canada's Wonderland, um, and they've expressed that. And uh, leaking something that they've obviously held so dear and that is extremely important to them would not be the right move. Um, so we're all going to find out together. This is a really exciting project. And I am just reviewing what we see before us on the footing map and the footing layout um, and teasing campaigns to figure out what this coaster is. Do you still think it'll be over 200 feet tall? This is a tough question because, yes, there is a huge part of me that believes it'll be over 200 feet tall. Um, but obviously that is all speculation um, and there is no concrete information as to if it'll be over 200 feet tall. The complicated part of this is, do I think the element exiting the mountain is going to be over 200 feet tall? And my answer to that is no, I do not. You do not want to ruin the sight line of the mountain with a structure that is coming much higher out of it. So do I, what I think the element coming out of the mountain is going to be is around 160 to 175 feet tall max. Um, what I'm hoping for is the element at Extreme Sky Flyer to be the star attraction of this roller coaster. Um, there's a reason they removed Extreme Sky Flyer so last minute. The park did say that they wish they could have said goodbye, but it was a last minute removal. That has been confirmed to me. So that tells me that there was some sort of last minute drawing board where they wanted to add something um, to this project. Where will each launch be and why? Well, the main launch is definitely going to be in the mountain. I do think there's going to be another launch that takes you over to Extreme Sky Flyer. I do not think the launch coming out of the station, that booster launch, is going to be considered a main launch. But who knows? I could be wrong. Um, do you think Project 2025 will break any records slash world records? If so, how many? I do think that they will break a record. Um, a world record, and for the most part, I think it's just going to be Canadian records. Will inter international show place be impacted? Um, I don't think so, but there are markings on the building, so that's a complicated one. There is no sign of it being impacted quite yet. It did just get a new paint um, job on its seats and all that. Will it be able to run during Winterfest? No, I do not think so. Will the fly be rethemed? Yes, I strongly think so. Which element do you think will most likely be in the Extreme Sky Fire Spot of Land? I think an inverted top hat or a top hat or some sort of vertical loop. They've been, there's been a huge emphasis on a circle in this teasing campaign. So whether that be that signature vertical loop on Premier Coasters or it was just to symbolize the two elements coming combining to create the master element, the launch. 
Will there be comfort colors on the trains? Well, there's been no signs of Premier um, releasing any new designs of track or trains. Um, again, there has been a small notice of a, a different footing pattern on this coaster. It does not align with Premier Dueling Coasters. It doesn't align with Premier Launch Coasters like Full Throttle. Um, it is more spaced out, which uh, suggests a thicker spine, from what I've been told by engineers. Um, which means we could potentially see new trains. Do I think they had enough time to design new trains with how last minute this project kind of was? No, I really don't, to be honest. Um, this is a really tight fit. So it'll be interesting to see what it went, what they went with. Um, I have seen other parks remove the comfort colors off their trains. So I'd be interested to see if Wonderland does the same thing. How many trains will there be? Well, there will definitely be three trains. Um, I think there's a potential for four trains. Does the booster launch out of the station count as one or of the two anticipated launches? My personal opinion is no, it does not. Um, I know someone that got a tour of uh, the track manufacturing plant recently, and the track manufacturing plant didn't suggest that this coaster was for Wonderland, but they were talking about a current coaster they were working on. Um, and when they talked about a project they were working on, they referred to it as it would enter a hold, and then it would enter into a booster that would get them towards the first launch of the ride. Um, so that to me suggests that they are not considering that a launch, but who knows that again is all up in the air um, for you guys to take with a grain of salt. <laughs> um, what do we know about the color scheme with the black supports, white with black supports for sure? No, we know nothing about the color scheme. They have been te teasing fire and ice. Do I think they're gonna go with blue and red track? I hope not. That would ruin the sight line of the mountain, um, but who knows? I, I mean, <laughs> I would hope that they go with neutral colors to blend in with um, a neutral setting like the mountain. Um, do you anticipate a vertical launch? That's an interesting question. I do think that if the launch isn't powerful enough the launch will start to curve up with the track so we'll have to wait and see uh will what will the track layout be inside the mountain that's an interesting question do i think premier has the possibility of doing a spaghetti bowl element somewhere in the mountain um i think there's a chance they could do some elements in the mountain again we need a lot more support columns accounted for from the mountain over to extreme sky flyer and that's a lot to go from 15 outside tunnel 3 to column 111 in uh, extreme sky flyers so i am expecting some weird elements between the mountain and extreme sky flyer um will this be the best themed coaster at wonderland i do think this will be the best themed coaster um, it's definitely going to be heavily adventure-based and storyline-based, so that'll be um, really cool to see how that transpires. Do you think the 2025 season passes will be available to buy on announcement day? I do. Do you, uh, do you think this coaster is coming out of the top of the mound? I do. Do you think the announcement will show us the entire coaster? I do. What has been your favorite part of this construction so far? To be honest, the, I have not liked any aspect of this construction project at all. If you're one of my friends or you're close to me or you're in my Discord server, um, you'll know that I've been heavily stressed out and I'm used to knowing everything about Wonderland's future. Uh, I, I'm very fortunate to know people in the industry in the United States and all that. And as you remember, I talked about one of my people... Um, in the States, tipping me off about Premier really early, and I didn't believe them, and I should have believed them. Um, so it's really weird for me to um, not know a full layout for this coaster, and it's been uncomfortable. <laughs> As someone who likes to know things, it has been uncomfortable not knowing every aspect of this project, just to be transparent, and it's it's been very stressful with holes coming out of the mountain, and the holes not uh, honestly making sense, and then um, buildings coming down, extreme sky flaring coming down, how little markings there are on the ground, the way Wonderland has done this to keep it a secret, um, the conversations I've had with Wonderland, everything about this project is just uncomfortable, <laughs> to put it lightly. Um, 
based on the footing count and locations, is dueling coaster possible? It's obviously always possible. It would be really weird. The threaded rod is pretty small, I'm going to be honest. If you compare it to B&Ms and other large-scale coasters, it's pretty thin. Um, and again, the footing goes from 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, one, two, um, which does not align with other dueling premier coasters. So if it does end up being dueling, it's definitely going to have some sort of weird support structure that we've never seen before. And that's why it's gone under the radar. But personally, I do not think it's going to be dueling. Um, what could what Premier offer that Wonderland had to switch plans? Well, Premier offers um, really good launch coasters. Like if you look at Full Throttle, um, back in 2013, that cost six million American dollars. If you can build a coaster like Full Throttle for six million dollars, that's a deal. That's a steal. Um, so with inflation costs, you add about a million three hundred thousand dollars to that six million. Um, you're looking at like seven point five million to build Full Throttle, double its length for our coaster project, and you're looking at um, about 16 million uh, American dollars to build our coaster, not including the mountain construction costs and Alpen Festival. Um, so with the evidence we got, will this be dueling fire and ice coaster or is fire and ice simply the theme? I love this question. So I've told you guys, I know who's been behind the teasing campaign and... Um, they have a history in journalism, and they love puzzles and escape games and all that. And I knew right away that this teasing campaign was going to throw us off. A teasing campaign isn't designed to lead us down the right direction. It is designed to throw us off sometimes. And Wonderland had an opportunity with an unknown project to really be vague. And I know, and I can confirm um, and talk about this, Wonderland has wanted to keep this a secret. Um, I've had conversations with the park. Um, this is not something that they wanted um, revealed at all. I'm sure you guys have noticed some changes in my content. The drone stopped flying until announcement day. As you can tell, there's a reason for that. Um, there are certain things that have been not wanted to be revealed, and uh, this is just something that they didn't want to get out, down to the fact that when you normally see about 40 to like 80 people working on a coaster construction project, you've had six people. So with that knowledge, you can tell that clearly they haven't brought in the entire team in to work on this coaster. Um, the, there's been a lot of people, they haven't started building the station. They've wanted less hands touching the blueprints and the project, less information to get out. Um, I'll even talk about something a little more transparent. They went as far to build this out of the water table. Um, so if you build something on a water table, um, you have to submit the blueprints and all the planning documents. This project was built completely avoiding every water table surrounding it right up to the station line. Um, where the station is located and everything, it does not touch a single centimeter of the water table, which means no documents would have needed to be submitted um, to city officials or government officials about this project. So receiving information on it has been very limited in that aspect. Um, it's just really important to Canada's Wonderland, and I'm sure we're all going to learn why tomorrow. The fire and ice, in my opinion, is simply referring to uh, the storyline. Fire and ice combined to create the elements um, gives it away to me that there's going to be a storyline like two mages or the two dragons or just fire and ice, the elements accidentally combined and they created what we're going to see tomorrow. Anyways... Thank you so much for watching today's video. Do not forget about the giveaway. Like, comment, and make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. Um, so like and comment this video down below. Comment what you think this coaster is going to be. Um, and yeah, uh, 25 of you will move on to the final round where we'll do the draw to give away the gold pass with all season fast lane, all season dining, and all season drink. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Um, and tomorrow is going to be epic. I'm really excited. Um, again, as someone that um, has covered this project and had conversations, I can tell you guys that this is going to be amazing. Um, 
I, I'm really excited. I've never seen Wonderland behave the way they've behaved through this project. Um, and to me, that says everything. And I'm really excited to see this storyline take shape. And I'm, I honestly, I'm going to record my live reaction to the animation video because I'm just, I'm just really excited and you guys should be too. Hopefully it is the thrilling coaster that you all want. Um, it is very long at minimum. It is a very long coaster and, um, yeah, super excited. I know you guys are too. Um, and it's been fun. Have a good one guys. Bye.